this tutorial, I'll show you how to create one of these portal effects. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go to Composition, New Composition, and this particular one I'm going to do at 4096 by 2160. You can do it at 1920 by 1080 if you want to do it in HD. And I'll just call this composition Portal Base. And now that I've got the composition started, I am going to add a layer new solid. And that's going to give me something to add some effects to. And I, I could call this, I'll call it Sparking Base. It doesn't really matter, but that's what it is right now. And then I'm going to add the effects. So I'm going to go to my effects and presets. And I'm going to find it under Simulation, the one that I want, and I'm going to get Particle World and drag that to my layer. Now, if I hit Play or the Space Bar, you'll notice I have these explosive particles, but I need to change that so it twirls. You'll find that under Physics, and instead of Explosive, I'm going to change it to Twirl. Now, you'll notice that it does twirl, but not exactly in the way that I want it to because of this direction access. To change it, I'm going to do it exactly. So I'm going to go to this Y axis and I'm going to make that a zero. And I'm going to take my Z axis and make it one. Now when I hit play, you'll notice that it does twirl a little bit better, but it is being affected by gravity. So I'm going to pause that and then I'm going to change my gravity to zero. Now you'll notice that I've got the nice twirl effect on those sparks. The next thing I want to do is I want something to happen to it when it hits this floor area or the simulated floor. And I'm going to change it from what it currently is, where it's set at floor action none, I'm going to change it to ice. Now you'll notice that when it hits that simulated floor, it kind of skids across as though it is striking ice. Next thing I want to do is I want to add a little bit of a glow to this. So I'm going to come over to my effects and presets and I'm going to type glow. And I'm going to grab the glow effect and add it to my layer. Now it doesn't look that good right now. First thing I'm going to do is change this glow based on to my alpha layers. Now it looks like it's glowing, but it still doesn't look very good. So I'm going to make some more changes. But I want to get the colors and I'm going to get instead of using this black and white, I'm going to use the colors from my particle. So here in Particle World, I'm going to expand that particle so I can get the colors. And I'm going to scroll down a little bit so I can see my glow. Where do, What colors do I want to use? So I'm going to use the eyedropper tool and I'm going to get the yellow for the light color and then the eyedropper tool for the dark color and I'm going to get the red. Now I'm using the same colors. Still doesn't look that good because I need to make a few more changes. I'm going to go ahead and collapse my particle world because I don't need that right now. And I'm going to leave these settings. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that glow radius. I'm going to increase the radius to maybe, maybe about 103 or so. And the glow intensity, I'm going to increase that to 3 or a little bit better than 3. Now I've got the glow that I want. And I can see that kind of twirl, spark, and glow, and skid across the floor. Next thing I want to do is I want to get that portal opening up in these sparks. So I'm going to need to mask it. Now in order to make the mask work with this effect, I'm going to need to pre-compose. So I'm going to go to my layer, I'm going to right click it and choose pre-compose. And then it asks me what I want to do, leave attributes or move. I want to move the all the attributes to the new composition. And then I'll call this one beginning of portal. Doesn't matter the name, whatever's going to help you remember it. So now I've got this, looks the same but now I can actually mask it. So up at the top here, I'm gonna to go to my masks. I'm gonna get the ellipse tool. 
and make sure that the layer is selected. If it's not selected, you're going to be drawing a shape. I'm going to undo that. So make sure the layer is selected, and then you can see this mask tool show up. I'm going to hold shift so I can get a circle. And then I've got a circle, and what it's doing is it's revealing what is in the circle and hiding what's outside of it. But that's not what I want to happen. I actually want to do it the other way, so I'm going to choose Invert. And now you can see that. Now it's not in the right place, so I'm going to get my Select tool and kind of line this up. And now I've got that kind of about where I want it. I might make some changes to it a little bit later. Move it over a little bit more. Now if you click it and then you start to pull these, you're going to change those handles. Don't want to do that. Double click it and then you can move that to where you want it. Now it looks a little bit rigid. So I'm going to expand that mask, and I'm going to choose to feather it a little bit. I'm going to click to the side so you can kind of see that feather effect. Now, I want to make some other changes to this because I don't want this to be all the way to the edges of my frame. In order to do that, I'm going to take this mask, and I'm going to duplicate it. So I select that mask, and I do a... Control D, if you're on a Mac, you would do Command D. Now it's not doing it the way I want it to just yet because this is set to add and this is set to add and inverted. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one and I'm going to choose Subtract. Now you'll notice that I do have it, but I don't exactly have what I want because I need to make some changes to expand this mask too. So I'm going to expand mask to here, open that up. And I'm going to go to Mask Expansion and click and drag that to about the size that I want it. Now, it is maybe about the size that I want, but it looks, again, a little too rigid. So I'm actually going to be changing that feather to even more now. And I'm doing that to the second mask, not the first one. So the inner one will be a little bit more rigid, and the outer one will be even softer. So now you can see if I drag through time, then that kind of appears. But what's not happening is this hole is not expanding, and I want that hole to expand. So I don't need to be looking at mask 2 right now. I'm going to be looking at mask 1. And here under mask 1, I'm going to be turning this little clock on, a little stopwatch. But I'm going to go a little further in time because I want to see how it's going to affect it. So I just went further in time. Doesn't matter how far, just as long as my sparks are all the way bright and it's kind of filled the area. Now I'm going to take and I'm going to turn that stopwatch on. And from this point, what I wanted to do is I'm going to actually shrink that mask expansion. So I'm going to bring that down until it disappears, just right when it disappears. Now I'm going to take that keyframe, that diamond, and I'm going to move it to the beginning of time for that particular piece of video. So it's going to expand, but it hasn't expanded yet because I haven't said that I want it to actually expand over time. So I'm going to go forward and I'm going to find the spot where I want it in time to be fully expanded. So maybe I want this to take two and a half seconds. So I'll set it to 212 there. And now I'm going to take that mask expansion and I'm going to increase it. So now I've expanded it. And then you'll notice that it grows now. And that looks pretty good. Now I can do something similar to the bottom one, but I don't really think that's necessary because you can kind of see it grows, hits the ground, 
and then the inside expands. Next thing I want to do is I want to add a little bit of a ring on the inside here because that doesn't really seem to be glowing much and then that soft edge doesn't seem to work out very much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of a glow or an ellipse to the inside of this. To add that, I'm going to add a new solid. Don't worry about uh, the color of it because it's going to get rid of that color. And I'll just call this ellipse. And the next thing I want to do is I want to add that ellipse effect. Fastest way to do it is just to search for it. And I'm going to grab that ellipse and I'm going to drag it to that solid. Now it's there, but it's this little tiny circle right there. So I'm going to be making some changes to it. I'll expand the width so that it goes to the, the width of my sparks there and same thing for the height. Now I'm going to punch in those same numbers. Right now it is at 1256 so I'll punch in 1256 and then I've got that ring there. Then I'm going to change that thickness and in increase that. And the numbers right now for this 4k piece I've got it at uh, 96. It might change depending on your settings. Colors are not right though. So what I'm going to have to do is I want to get those colors from this earlier sparks. To access those again I'm just going to double click it and then that's going to bring me into this composition. So I need to get those colors. So I'm going to come to my effects, and I'll go to my glow. I'm going to click the yellow, and I'm going to copy that color. So I copy these this letters numbers, and just Control C or Command C if you're on a Mac. Click OK. Now I'm done right there. I'm going to go back to that portal base composition. Go to my ellipse and expand that and the lighter color I'm going to paste. Now it looks pretty good. I think the the red might be a slightly different red. Looks like it might be. So same thing here. I'm going to get this one, copy it, and then I'll go back to my portal base and paste it. And now I'm using the same colors. Now, that doesn't look very good because it's just kind of stuck there on top. In the same way that I did a mask expansion, I'm going to do an expansion on this ellipse. So I'm going to take this and I am going to turn these clocks on for the width and the height. And now I'm going to take that width and height and I'm going to make that zero. Now it's just that little bit of a dot right there. Then I'm going to scroll forward to two and a half seconds. And then I can bring that back up to 1256 and 1256. Now you're going to notice that it's going to expand with the mask. That kind of works, but it doesn't really integrate very well just yet. So I want this to integrate a little bit more into this, these sparks. So I'm going to make some changes to this. And I'm going to add some effects to that ellipse. So first thing I want to do is I want to 
pause for a moment. First thing I want to do is I want to add some warping to it. So I'm just going to type in wave and I'm going to get this wave warp. And I'm going to drag that to my ellipse layer. Now I've got a little bit of some wave action going on there. And that kind of works, but not fully because it looks just vertical. So I'm going to take that wave warp and I'm going to duplicate it. So I'm going to do a control D or command D if you're on a Mac. And now it's there, but I want to now change this direction to the second one to zero. Now you'll notice that I have it both vertical and horizontal. That's getting a little bit closer to what I want. I'm going to do some other effects, so I'm going to collapse these. The next thing I want to do is I want it to have a little bit of a twirl to it. So to get the twirl, I'm going to come over to my effects and presets, and I'm going to type in twirl, start to type it in, and under distort, I'm going to grab twirl and drag that to my ellipse layer. Then I'm going to take that and I'm going to change the angle of the twirl. So I'm going to go ahead and drag that to maybe about 270. I'm going to punch in 270. How's that look? That looks okay. Kind of seems to be blending in a little bit more. but it doesn't blend totally. So what I want to do is I want to change this ellipse and how this layer is blending with the other layer. And I'm going to change that blending mode. So I'll go to layer, blending mode, and I'm going to change that maybe to screen. And we'll take a look at that. And how's that look? It looks like it blends in a little bit more. I'm going to undo that just so you can see if there's a difference. Looks like it. I'm going to go ahead and redo that. See how it blends in a little bit more on the edges. So that looks pretty good. The next thing I want to happen is I want it to have some sparks that are actually bouncing. So I've got these, this beginning of the portal here that has the sparks, and I've got the ellipse, but I actually want to get some a little bit of a bounce action. So to get that bounce action, I'm going to go ahead and add a new layer, solid, and I'll call this bounce. After I've created that solid, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go to the simulation and I'm going to get particle world. I'm going to drag that back over here. Now you can see that I still have those explosive default sparks, but that's actually a decent place to start. I'm not going to make many changes here. I'm just going to go to the physics and I'm going to actually leave it at explosive and I'm going to click the floor and say particle visibility. Well, I don't want it all. I want the particle visibility after the floor. Now, it's you can see that after the floor, I see them, but they're not interacting with the floor. So I want to change that floor action. Now I want it to bounce. So now, when that kind of sparks, I'm getting a little bit of sparking action off the floor and it's skidding here and then it's bouncing there. Next thing I wanna do is I wanna make these particles glow. Now I could come over here and get the glow, but I wanna just get the exact settings that I have in the other one. So I'm gonna to go to my beginning of the portal and I'm gonna get this glow effect here. I'm gonna select up here in my effects 
controls and I'm gonna do a control C or command C if you're on a Mac, go back to my portal base, select my bounce layer and effect controls and paste. And now you'll notice that I have the sparks and the bounce and they have the same glow. They're kind of interacting with each other. The next thing I want to do to this portal is a little bit more blending and then also adding some motion blur for the pixels. So I'm going to select all these layers and hold shift and select them all and then right click and I'm going to choose pre-compose. And for this one, I'll, I'll call this one Motion Blur. So now that I have this pre-composed all into one layer, I'm going to do a couple more things. I'm actually going to take this layer and I'm going to duplicate it. And then it gets a little bit brighter. The top layer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to change the blending mode to screen. Then it blends a little bit more. And I'm going to go to this back one. And I'm going to take and I'm going to apply an, an effect called a pixel motion blur. So I'm going to get this pixel motion blur and drag that to the back layer. Now you'll notice that it looks like it's got a little bit of motion blur on the pixels. Now it does take a, a little bit longer to render that, but it seems to look a little bit better. Now that that is done, it could be pretty much done, but I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and I'm gonna pre-compose this one more time so I can make it into a layer that'll look a little bit more 3D. So I'm going to grab all of these two layers, right click, and I'm going to choose pre-compose one more time. And for this one, I'll call it whole portal. And I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to convert this to a 3D layer just so you can kind of see how that looks. So it appears to be three-dimensional. So I can take and I can rotate this, or I can move it closer or further, and it seems to be interacting with the floor. So you can place that wherever you needed it to be for your particular project. But I'm going to go ahead and do some undos, put that back where it is. Now, if you wanted to, you could even take and export this uh, with alpha channels, and then you can layer this over the top of other video that you have. But I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit more work in this so you can see how you can have it actually interact with some sort of background. So I'm going to go and get some video. And I'm going to select this video. This is my foreground. And I'm going to choose New Comp from Selection. And then I've got this foreground. And then this is the present world. And then in, let's say there's another world that I want to be revealing. I'm going to get that piece of video. And I'm going to put that underneath. Now you can't see it because it is hidden. But if I click this eye, then you can see what's underneath. The next thing I'm going to do is bring in that whole portal. So I'm going to grab that composition and drag it above my video. And then you'll see there it is, it kind of appears. Now the problem with this right now is it is too big. That's because I made this at 4K. Now for this step, you might not need to do it if you started your portal in 1080, but I wanted to make it at 4K. So I'm gonna go ahead and scale this down. I'm gonna scale that down to 50%. And now it seems like it actually interacts with that floor in that space. So looks pretty good. 
don't need to listen to it. So I'm going to turn off the sounds for the, those layers. And then I have my portal. Next thing I want to do is I want to be punching a hole through. And then I'll do some other work to make it blend a little bit more. So to punch a hole through, I'm going to be doing masking. Now I'm going to go further in time so I can make sure that I'm getting the mask the right size. So I'm going to go ahead and mask this out. But before I do that, I want this to look a little bit more 3D so it's not right in the middle. So I'm going to take this whole portal and I'm going to convert it to a 3D layer. Now that it's a 3D layer, I can take and I can change the perspective a little bit more and make that seem like it is in a three-dimensional world. And then I can see it kind of skid across and then you can see the particles as they kind of shoot off in that direction. So that is also an advantage of making a little bit larger because then I've got a little bit more space to play with. So it seems like that those particles hit that floor, interact with it, skid across it. Now I'm going to go ahead and create that ellipse. So I'm going to go a little bit further in time and I'm going to create a mask. Now make sure you're selected that foreground layer. I'm going to rename this. So I'm just going to select it and hit enter. And I'm going to rename this one, I guess, foreground. And then this background one, I'm going to select it, hit enter and background or whatever you want to name it. So now I'm going to add that mask. So I'm going to go making sure that this foreground layer is selected. I'm going to go to my ellipse tool and I'm going to make that ellipse. Now I'm not going to be holding shift for this because I did rotate that three dimensionally. So it's not a perfect circle. So I'm going to move this about where I want it. I could double click it and then resize it. Now, looks like it's going the wrong way. No big deal because I just need to choose invert. And now one is revealing the other. But you'll notice that it again is just kind of static and then the sparks there and then it reveals. Probably will have to do some other work there as well. Now the good thing is I'm not using the whole thing so I can reposition that background layer. I'm actually going to make it a 3D layer because then I can move it around in three-dimensional space. I can take and I can push it further away or I can rotate it. So I'm going to grab my Z position and push it a little bit further back. And then if I wanted to, I could also rotate it. I can grab one of these or I can grab this Y rotation and maybe add a little bit of different perspective there. But again, that mask is not expanding. So at least I've got that at the right perspective. So I'm going to go ahead and hide my portal for now just so we can take a look at that. But the edges are very, very solid. So I'm going to take this mask and I'm going to go ahead and feather it a little bit. Not a lot, just a little bit. If I click off, then you can kind of see that feather effect. All right. Looks OK. Turn that portal back on. That might be blending a little bit more. Now let's go ahead and do that expansion. I'm going to go to when the portal is completely open. So I'm going to go to that two and a half second mark. Because then I know that that's how big this is going to be. And it's not going to be getting any larger. Then I'm going to take and I'm going to turn this stopwatch on for mask expansion. And I'm going to leave that one. That keyframe right there. And I'm going to go to the beginning of time. I'm going to hide this Actually, I'm not going to go all the way to the beginning of time, but I'm going to hide this portal 
and not going all the way to the beginning. But I'm going to take that mask expansion and I'm going to bring it down till that disappears. Now I'm going to take that keyframe and bring it to the beginning of time. And I'll turn this portal back on. And they should be synchronized. As I drag that across, you'll notice that as the portal expands, so does the hole. So if I hide that, you'll see that it's expanding. And again, you want to make sure that timing is right. So I knew that my portal was going to be fully open at two and a half seconds or two seconds and 12 frames. So that's why I've timed it like that. So I've got my portal. Now I want to work a little bit on the blending. To blend this a little bit more, I'm going to take this whole portal. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it. Now I've got it on there twice. The top one I'm going to take and I'm going to change that layer blending mode and I'm going to choose screen. I think that blends a little bit more. So I have it on there twice. One of them is screened and the other one is set to normal. Just a couple more things that I want to do. I want to make it seem like this ground is looking like it's getting a little bit burnt. So I'm going to hide these other ones for right now. And, and I'm also going to add some smoke. So I'm going to add a layer new solid. And for this one, I'm going to make this one black. Click OK, and I'll call this Burnt. This is now the Burnt Ground layer. Then I'm going to take that, and I'm going to place it above the foreground. And actually, I'm going to place it between the two layers. I have my screen one, and then I have my normal one. So that Burnt Ground, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to mask it. So I'm going to create a little bit of a mask. And I'm going to take and feather this. Looks like it's a hole in the ground. But then I'm going to take and select this mask, double click it. Now you want to, again, double click it. So then you can rotate it and size it. I'm going to turn this one back on. And I'll turn that one back on. Now, doesn't look perfect just yet. So I'm going to make some other changes to it. Because if I hit play, you'll notice that that black spot is already there. And also, the blending isn't that great. So I'm going to take this burnt ground. And I'm going to change the layers blending mode for this. And I'm going to choose multiply. It's going to darken it. It's going to blend it a little bit more. But I'm also going to change its opacity. So I'm going to change that mask opacity, make it a little bit lighter. But still, it looks like it's a little dark there. But I need to also expand it. I'm going to hide these other things, these other layers. And I don't want it to seem burnt right away. So I'm going to go ahead and go to this mask expansion. Turn that clock on. I'm going to bring that and make it small. And then I'll bring that keyframe to the beginning. Now, I actually want it to take a little bit of time to look burnt. So maybe I'm going to go beyond four seconds. And then take that mask expansion. This is for that burnt ground. I'm going to increase it. So then it is going to look like that burnt area is growing with time. And you may need to readjust it. And if you want to, you could also make some other changes to it where you are actually moving these points. If you feel like that it would look a little bit better. So maybe I'll adjust these points just a little bit. But again, that's up to your project. 
So now I've got that as it kind of expands. But again, I'm going to change that timing so I, it doesn't happen right away. Because otherwise it's going to seem like that's a shadow of that. And I don't want it to seem like it's a shadow. I want it to seem like it's actually burning. All right, that looks pretty good. So not timing it exactly at the same time as the size of the portal so that it, it burns after the fact. Then I can turn these layers on to see how that looks. All right, looks like it's getting there. Next thing I want to do is add a little bit of smoke. So to do that, I'm going to go to Layer, New, Solid. And I'll call this Smoky. So now I've got this smoky layer. And I will figure out where I'm going to place that a little bit later. Now I'm going to go back to my particles under Simulation. But I'm not going to use Particle World. I'm just going to use Particle Systems 2. And I'm going to add that to my smoky layer. I'm going to turn off these other effects. It'll render a little bit faster. And then I can kind of see what I want. But again, here you can see I've got those sparks, but I don't want sparks. I'm going to be changing this particle at this point. So I'm going to go to my particle. And instead of a line, I'm going to choose a faded sphere. And then these colors. I'm going to make the birth color white and the death color a light gray. So they're going to look pretty similar. So I don't want any color to it, just the shade. So now I have these particles, but it almost looks like it's snowing through that hole in the, in the world. I'm going to make some other changes to this. So I'm going to take, and that's the particle that I want, but I'm going to adjust these physics. And instead of explosive, I'm going to choose fire. Now if I hit play, you can see that kind of has a look like it, it's fire, at least in its motion. But then I'm going to make some changes to the producer. So I'm going to take that X radius and expand it. And if, if you want to, you can adjust that Y one, but I don't think it's that necessary to adjust it too much there. So now it kind of looks like a little bit smoky, but I'm going to make some changes to these particles. So I'll go back to that particle, and I'm going to be adjusting a few things. For the birth size of this particle, I'm going to go ahead and make it larger. Just go ahead and drag that up, maybe 1.3. And then the death size, I want to maybe take to 1. Point nine. All right, so let's go ahead and hit play. All right, so now I've got some smoke. Now I just need to change its position. I take this position, and I'm going to move that down a little bit. Now it's way too smoky. So I'm going to change that max opacity, and I'm going to drop that down a lot. I'm going to drop that down to max opacity of only 3. So if I hit play, then you're going to notice that kind of smoking. Now, timing is going to be important for that smoke as well. I probably don't want it to smoke right away. So I'm going to take that smoke layer. I'm going to push it over a little bit. Knowing that at two and a half seconds, that portal is going to be fully open. So I'm going to push that maybe to as much as two seconds so that it starts to 
to raise. Next thing I want to do to this is change the smoking blending option. So I'm going to change that blending option to maybe to lighten and see if that looks okay. Looks all right. Now I'm going to click these other ones on so I can get a little bit more of an idea how it's going to look. It might take a little bit of time to render, but then you can see that it is expanding and then it's getting burnt in the ground and I've got a little bit of smoke there. The last thing I want to do is add an adjustment layer that's going to make it seem like there's these sparks that are kind of traveling across that. And I think that's going to help it blend in a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new layer and I'm going to choose an adjustment layer. An adjustment layer is going to adjust everything that's below it. So I'm going to make sure that that is above all my other layers. And then over here in generate, I'm going to get light rays. And then I get this little bit of light rays right here. So not light burst, but light rays. And I will make some changes. I'm going to go ahead and place it about where I would want it. And then I might make some adjustments to it. Maybe I'll make it a little bit smaller. But again, that's going to be up to you. And then I want it to move across, but I want it to pretty much take the whole time. So about when do I want it to happen? Maybe about this point in time I want it to start to happen. So I'm going to grab that adjustment layer and I'm going to move it so that it didn't start happening just yet. But then it's going to happen right there. But I want it to move across the frame all the way to the end of my composition. I'm going to go back to the beginning there. Say, all right, I want it at this point in time. So I'm going to turn that center stopwatch on. So it's saying at this point in time, I want this spark to be right about there. And then I'm going to go to the near the end of time. I'm going to be trimming this comp a little bit later. And I'm going to move it. like that. So what's actually going to happen is I'm going to get this bright spot that kind of moves across the floor. And I think that adds just a little bit more of an interaction between my foreground and my blending and my background. Last thing I want to do is just trim this comp. So I'm going to grab this and just make sure that the only thing I have in here is what I want in there. So I pull that that work area bar in. I'm going to say composition and trim comp to work area. So now that's all that I have in here. Now that I have my portal and my sparks and smoke and everything else, I want to just have this interact or blend a little bit more by changing the color of this scene. So I'll bring my playhead to the beginning of time and then I'm going to come to my effects and presets and look for Lumetri color. I'll grab Lumetri color and I'm going to drag it to my foreground and I'll just do some basic correction. I'm going to turn the stopwatch on for temperature and then I will also turn it on for exposure and contrast. And then I'm going to go a little bit further in time to about where I feel like it should be good and bright and starting to affect this scene a little bit. And I'm going to take that temperature and maybe I'm going to change that so it's a little bit on, on the red side. And then the exposure, I might brighten it up just a tiny bit. And then I'll take that contrast and punch it up. And I think that's going to make it look like it is 
interacting a bit more. So if I hit play, then the color of that scene also changes. So it begins like this, and then the color of the scene changes. So now that is done, I am ready to export. To export, go to File, Export, Add to Render Queue. I'm going to be using high quality, best settings, and I'm just going to specify the name of this. The Final Portal. And then I'm going to go ahead and save it, and then hit Render. Now that is going to take a while because it has lots of effects on it. When it is done, I can then import it into Adobe Premiere and add sound effects. And that is how you can create a portal.